Hey, good evening, everyone. Good evening. We want to welcome you. It's our MidConnect Bible study. We're so thankful that you're joining us this evening. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. We'll begin reading in verse number four. I want to speak to you just a few moments this evening, walking in confidence, walking in confidence. Reading, of course, out of the New King James this evening, Matthew 24 and 4, and Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumor of wars. See that you are not troubled. I want you to underline that this evening. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. See that you be not troubled, or that you are not troubled troubled. You know, the Bible goes on and tells us there that there will be nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And then he goes on to say, you'll be delivered up tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my namesake. And then many will be offended and will betray one another and will hate one another then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because of lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. And so we're talking about wars, rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, earthquakes, persecution, afflictions. We've seen all of these terrible manifestations of tribulations in our own day right now. But however, in the middle of this trouble, Jesus says the word, see that you be not troubled. In the midst of everything that's going on in our world today, Jesus is saying to you and I this evening, see that you be not troubled. Now the question is, Crystal, how can we be not troubled? When all we see on television, all that we see on social media, all the things that's going on around us, we see nothing but trouble. Right. So how do we as believers change our, change our perspective and notice and see, wait a minute, we are not to be troubled mm -hmm. in troubled times. Right. And so I know you may be shaking your head this evening saying, well, pastor, how can I help not being troubled? Mm -hmm. All this fear, all the anxiety, all the worry can become very contagious. And it can be yeah. if we allow it. But it's important for us to understand the words of Jesus and remember one thing during all of the trouble and the unrest, all of the mess that this world's going through. Remember this one thing. God is still in control. Yes. God is still in control. God is in control of your marriage, your mm -hmm. family, your finances, your business, your job, and every aspect, every detail of our life, God is still in control. Mm -hmm. And so allow me to let you in on a little secret. God is still in control over the devil, which is trying to mess with your life. Yes. John 10 and 10 says, He has come to steal, kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more, more abundantly. abundantly. Amen. What an incredible promise that you and I have as believers right there in God's Word in John 10 and 10 that, for, uh, that Jesus has come to give us life and mm -hmm. that that life is more abundantly. Yes. So we have to pull ourselves up by the Word and then begin to walk with confidence in the midst of the storm. Yes, amen. In the midst of the storm. Notice this evening, Crystal, in verse number 4 in Matthew, I'm sorry, verse number 14 in Matthew 24, it says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. Mm -hmm. Despite all of the trouble, the word of God will still be preached in power and in might. Yes. Amen. His word will never go out void. That's right. What is the gospel of the good news? What is the gospel of the good news? The good news is Jesus Christ. Yes. And all that he's done for you and I. So when we're talking about going through and hearing all the stuff that our world's going through today, we must understand and take heart, number one, that God's in control. But also, I want you to write this down. 
the good news will always remain. Yes, the, amen. The good news will always remain. We must learn to walk in this good gospel news. It's time for the church to learn who we are in Christ, mm -hmm. that we are born-again believers. That's right. To be born again means that we move from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. It involves a transition or a translation from one point to another That's point. That's right. Paul said the old things are passed away. Now all things have become new. new. Mm -hmm. And when we look at the word salvation this evening, because remember the good news is the good news of salvation and the good news will always remain. Mm -hmm. That word salvation in the Greek is sotera, S-O-T-E-R-I-A, sotera, which means healing, mm. safety, deliverance, protection, soundness, and it also includes the ministry of angels. Yes. And I think so many times if we're not careful as believers, we think salvation is just the forgiveness of our sins. Mm -hmm. That's just one part of, the to of, 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 of this great package that yes. comes with salvation. Absolutely. So with salvation comes our healing. Yep. With salvation comes protection. Mm -hmm. With salvation comes deliverance. Mm -hmm. With salvation comes soundness with salvation comes the ministry of angels that have been assigned to you and I. That's right. So we are an heir of salvation. We have a right, a benefit from everything that salvation has to offer. That's right. So salvation offers multiple things. So we as believers have a right to walk in the benefits. Remember mm -hmm. what he said in Psalms 103. He says, forget not all his benefits. benefits. So the first thing I want you to remember, the good news will remain. Number two, write this down. Don't give up. Don't yeah. give up. And so when we're talking about uh, not giving up, we go back to that good news. Yep. The good news of Christ, Amen. right, mm -hmm. is the salvation. Hebrews 2, 1 through 3, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, mm -hmm. lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, right. which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him? Yes. We simply cannot escape trouble if we neglect our salvation. That's right. So before I jump to point number two about giving up, going back to what point number one says is that the good news remains, is that if, if we're going to escape the trouble, if we're going to escape all that's going on in our world today, we cannot neglect our salvation. We that's cannot right. neglect our salvation. Right. Salvation then becomes our way of escape. Yes. And remember what he said, salvation is more than just saving, it's delivering, it's protecting, it's providing. And so it's the ministering of angels. All of the things, including Soter, are available to us, but in order to obtain them, we have to be willing to pay for them. I was just going to say this um, before you went into the Soter. I was thinking of those things, those, those extra benefits, if you mm -hmm. will. And I was, it's the hope. And the Bible talks about the hope of glory in Christ Jesus. So many times I think we take the hope that's stated in the Word of God as the hope that we use today in our natural, like, good Lord, I hope that comes to pass. Oh, man. No, this is the hope of assurance. Assurance, yes, Because good. it's going to come to pass when yes. we walk and are in Christ Jesus. It will come to pass. It's not a hope of that we are just wringing our hands and, hoping and praying. No, it's an assurance. Correct. And you know, what do we have to pay for them? Or, or what do we have to give in exchange for this benefit that God gives us? Well, Proverbs 4, 20, 25 and 27, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Do not turn to the right or the left. All we have to do to receive the benefits of our salvation is to give heed, mm -hmm. pay attention to the things that we've heard yes. from the Word of God. 
Right. So there's this there's this exchange. There's the the medium of our exchange mm -hmm. is the paying attention to what does the word of God You're say. You're right. Absolutely. And so the good news that will remain is that Jesus paid the price for this great salvation for each of us. We don't have to buy it because Jesus already paid the price. He gave his life. Blood was shed. The blood purchased our healing. Mm -hmm. The blood purchased our soundness, our safety, That's our right. protection Absolutely. in our deliverance. So we must understand that the gospel will always remain. Matter of fact, in the same chapter in Matthew 24, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. forever. The word of God will remain forever. Mm -hmm. Number two, let's get back to number two. Yes. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. Even though we have been given this great salvation, we can't deny the problem that they do come. Right, absolutely. And in fact, Jesus said in his word in John 16, 33, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's right, amen. One of the biggest enemies of faith is weariness. Yes. Often our everyday tribulations can wear us down to the point to where we wanted to simply quit and throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. But the answer to our prayer seems so far away that we become tired of believing the promises God has given to us in his word. So then we look to the book of Hebrews chapters 12, or chapter 12, verse 3, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. So mm -hmm. In the moment of our weariness, because we're going to be weary. We're going to experience times where we're just like, man, I, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I right. can do it. It is at that moment then we need to take a look at Christ. And the Bible says in Hebrews 12 and 3, consider him. Right. Consider him that endured such contradiction mm -hmm. of sinners against him. For if we allow ourselves to become weary, we will faint in our minds. Absolutely. And remember what Galatians says, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. not. The word faint means to cave in, mm -hmm. to be discouraged, and quit. Right. So we cannot get to a place to where we're so discouraged that we're just wanting to cave in and we're just wanting to quit. Right. So those moments that we have to look, the Bible tells us to consider Jesus. In other words, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and his word. Mm -hmm. Remember, what is the exchange that you and I use to be able to live in this troubled mess that we're in, yet not be troubled? Don't let the trouble get on the inside. Right. Well, we keep our eyes on Jesus and his word. A good reason why we should keep our eyes on him is because he, he never gets weary. Of course, we're speaking of Jesus now. Mm -hmm. According to Isaiah 40, 28, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. weary. So it is so good to know this evening that we have a God in heaven that does not give up, that does not cave in, and does not quit. That's right. Humans are capable of quitting yep. and giving up, but God never will. That's right, never. Let me say that again. Humans are capable of quitting and giving up, but God never will will. So we serve a God that will always be there for us. Don't give up, child of God, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're experiencing, never give up. God will never give up on you. No, Hang won't. in there. God is about to bring you through the storm into his sunshine. That's right. And it's important we understand that. Absolutely. Number Amen. three, when we're talking about how to walk in confidence in troubled times, just wait on the Lord. Yes. Just wait on the Lord. So once we've made up our mind that we're not giving up, mm -hmm. and remember, make up your mind before you're in the storm. Mm -hmm. Don't decide in the storm, I'm not going to give up. No, make up your mind before you go in the storm mm -hmm. so you're ready. Once we've made up our mind that we're not giving up, then we need to learn to just wait on Him. Mm -hmm. Waiting on Him means that we're resting in the arms of God. Mm -hmm. And as we're resting in the arms of God, we gain strength yes, in the midst of our weakness and trouble. Yes. Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. He giveth power to the faint, mm -hmm. and to them that have no might, He increases strength. Mm -hmm. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not 
faint. Now, just think about that for a moment, the wings of an eagle, the wings of an eagle. First, it is important to know that the wings of an eagle are designed to enable that bird to cruise at high altitudes. At 80,000 feet, eagles cruise about twice as high as jet aircraft normally fly. Wow. Second, the eagle's wings are designed to lock down in position to gain altitude so that if the eagle is caught in a storm, it can rise above the storm. Mm -hmm. So when we're waiting on our promise and those who wait on the Lord, Mm -hmm. what is happening is we're mounting up with wings as eagles and now we're soaring higher than the trouble. That's right. We're not allowing the trouble or the mess to dictate our emotions and to lead us down the wrong path. But now we're soaring like the wings of an eagle. Mm -hmm. We're soaring into a greater altitude with God. And as our altitude goes, so goes our attitude. That's right. That's powerful. So that we can soar. So we can just just hang on, child of God. Your altitude is about to change. Mm -hmm. Your altitude is about to change. When we set our mind on the promises of God and His Word, we're mounting up with wings as eagles. May the Lord fill this house, fill your house with a spirit of an eagle. Yes. That we're not turkeys. Turkeys run from danger. Mm -hmm. Eagles soar above the danger. Mm -hmm. So we're not running. We're not backing down anymore. We're not caving in. We've made up our mind that we're not going to give up. We know that the gospel will, will always remain. And then we're going just to wait on the Lord because the Lord is going to bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And then last but not least this evening, number four, as we wait in Him, we receive peace. Yes, amen. It's a covenant of peace. Mm -hmm. The book of Isaiah says that God has established a covenant of peace with us. Isaiah 54, 10, for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that have mercy on thee. Yes. So, Crystal, by establishing this covenant of peace, God has done his part in the process of our walking in his confidence. Mm-hmm. He's made the covenant and ratified it with his son's blood, yes. which enables us to do our part so that this covenant can be effective in our lives. That's right. Satan's part in the process is to keep us from inheriting this covenant. Mm-hmm. But every child of God has a right to live in this peace covenant that only Jesus can provide. Amen. The devil did, did not give us this covenant of peace. Nope. So he cannot take it away. Mm-mm. Right in the midst of trouble, God will give you a peace that will surpass all understanding. Yes, it's will. a supernatural peace. When all hell has come against you and you don't know what to do and you're discouraged and you're wanting to give up, you've already resolved in your spirit that giving up is not an option. Right. You've already made up your mind that you're going to continue to keep the fight of faith. Yes. Because remember, he that endures to the end shall be saved. That's a supernatural peace. John 16, These things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Ephesians 2, 14, for he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4 and 7, and the peace of God, which which passeth all All understanding, understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So I want to encourage you this evening that whatever you're going through, allow God's peace to flow. Yes, yes. So as believers, now we know that even when trouble comes, we don't, we don't have to allow trouble to trouble us. Can I just say this? So in Matthew 24, um, uh, chapter 4 and 
5, I think it is in mine. So I'm reading out of the NLT, and I just really like how it states. Verses 4 and 5? Yeah. In Matthew 24? Yes. Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you, for I, I will, uh, many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear rumors of wars. Right here, verse 6, I'm sorry. And I love how it says this, but don't panic. All these things mm. have to take place, but don't panic. Don't what panic. What does panic bring? It brings fear. It brings anxiety. It brings depression. You just feel a sense of overwhelmness. Everything's out of your control. Yes, it is out of your control, but it's not out of God's control. All the things, ha things have to take place. But when our security, when our hope, our assurance lies in Jesus Christ and the victory that's yes. already been established, yes. that's where we rest and know that we can have that perfect peace that you've been talking about. That's so good. I mean, don't panic. I just love that. Don't I pan couldn't let that go. Put it this way. When we don't accept the salvation that God has for us, yes. when we operate in a place of panic, yep. we're no longer accepting the salvation, the soterra that God has provided for yes. us. Because it's beyond just, just saving us and making us a new creature, mm -hmm. making us a new creation. That's right. So when we allow panic to dictate our life, mm -hmm. then what happens is we miss accepting the good news of salvation, Soterra, in our life. Right. So when you're faced with trouble and troubles around us right. every day, we must understand, we must be willing to accept our salvation. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Be willing to wait on the Lord and then allow the covenant of peace to take over. Yeah. So we're accepting the salvation. We're making up our mind that we're not going to give up. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait on the Lord and we're going to receive the peace, the covenant peace that Christ has for every one of us. That's right. You know, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're going through, the devil is after you. Mm -hmm. He wants to weary you. He wants to discourage you. He wants you to get to a place to where you just throw in the towel and you give up and give in. But I've come with a good word this evening on this Wednesday night. I've come to let you know you don't have to give in to the enemy. That's right. That the plans of God are greater. Yeah. That the plans that God has for every one of us is to prosper and to be in good health even as our soul prospers. Yes, I speak to every situation that is listening to me, listening to me right now and that will listen later on. I speak to your body, I speak to your mind, I speak to your family. Yes. And I declare in the name of Jesus, I declare the gift of salvation in the name of Jesus that you would walk in the total package that Christ has given you and yes, I. Amen. He went to Calvary, he died for you and me. And he rose again on Sunday morning so that you and I could walk in victory. You, Jesus. It's not his purpose for you and I to be discouraged. It's not his purpose for you and I to walk around in fear. But it is his purpose that you and I walk around in the abundant life that only Jesus can give us. Amen. Would you allow me just to pray for you this evening? I, I, I want to pray that the Holy Spirit would continue to touch your Amen. heart and touch your mind that you, you're going to make up your mind, you're going to make a resolve tonight that I'm not going to give up. Amen. That no matter how, how much is coming my way, no much, how much hell is coming to my house, right. I'm not going to give up. Because I'm going to listen to what he said in Matthew 24. I'm not going to allow my heart to be troubled. I will not be troubled. That's right. Let's pray. Father God, in the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus, you know every heart, you know every need. You know every individual that's under the sound of our voice this evening and those that will watch later. Father, I'm asking this evening, God, that you would touch each and every one of our people. God, I pray in the, by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would move in a mighty way. God, we come against every attack of the enemy. God, in the midst of trouble, we will not be troubled. No. But Lord, we accept the full package. We accept every benefit that has been given to us as believers because of what your son did at Calvary, because there's an empty tomb. We are not going to walk around just half-heartedly experiencing life, but we're going to walk in the fullness yes. of the anointing, the fullness of life that you have for us. We come against every distraction. Yes. We come against every tactic and deceptive word of the enemy. Yes. 
And Lord, we're not going to give up. We're not going to be discouraged, but we're just going to wait on you. And God, as we're waiting on you, we're going to receive the covenant of peace in the name of Jesus. Yes. So we receive that right now. We receive that peace that surpasses yes, all you. understanding. You, and God. Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. We love you. We appreciate you. Don't forget this coming Sunday morning. You don't want to miss what God is doing in this house. Be here at 11 a.m. There's so many incredible things happening. April 8th is our men's fire night worship. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an incredible time here at 7 o'clock right here in the sanctuary, April 8th. And then our Easter Sunday celebration is going to be a, a day filled with this incredible ministry. And then after our service, we're going to be having an Easter egg hunt for our children. And so we just want to encourage you to be a part of what God is doing right here in Encounter we love you, we appreciate you, and remember, we are Encounter Strong. Strong. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to give into this ministry, there are three ways to give. You can either give in person on Sunday or Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., online at EncounterCOG.com forward slash give, or mail it to us at 12240 Mile Road, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22407. Once again, thank you for joining us.